So it's about seven o'clock in the morning. It's not quite as an early start as we could have gotten, but I wanted some coffee. <laughs> I got up a little bit late this morning. These are the mountains that we're going up in today. This is the, uh, again, it's the Sierra Ancha. And there are ancient cliff dwellings up there. I mean, they're not like Mesa Verde, huge, gigantic things, but they're really cool because they're off the beaten path, so to speak. They're really hard to get to. You have to hike way past what you can see. Almost as high as, well, pretty much as high as you can see, but way up the valley that way. And it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be so much fun. And the whole time we're gonna be thinking about the people that lived up there you know, 600 years ago. And why did they build their houses so far up the canyon in an area that was so inaccessible to their farmland, which would have been down here in the bottom below where I'm standing. I mean, they would have had to come down here all the time to tend their crops. I'll give you a little close up. The canyon on the left, I believe, is the one we're gonna hike up. That's where the shelters are. But there's also a canyon on the right that I've never been up. So we might go that way too, if we're not too tired. Because if there's one thing I can guarantee about today, it's we're gonna be tired at the end. That I can promise you. The old truck is still holding together. I got a cracked windshield and the glass in the back is all broken out. <laughs> it's been a kind of a rough trip on it. Oh, and I wanted to show you my Arizona pinstriping. I got some when I was out here. I thought it was pretty cool. Everybody seems to have it. How do you like it? All these scratches, look at all the scratches on the truck. <laughs> That's from the, uh, the bushes you have to drive through, but that'll actually come right out. Well, maybe. Yeah, it'll buff out. Mostly. <laughs> Oh well, that's a truck, that's what it's for. We're gonna park down in the bottom there where the stream is. Just to get a little bit closer. That's about the end of the day. I don't think we're gonna wanna even hike up this little little bit of road to the uh, to the camp. We're heading out of here anyway if we get out before dark. This is the road we walked on and uh, looked at scorpions last night. You may have already seen that video, it's hard to say. You may never see the video. <laughs> Wasn't that great? Isn't that beautiful? I guess I should have watched the road. Yeah, there's a pretty good reason to watch the road right there. All right, so this is the trailhead, and we're going to head up the mountain now. I wanted to show you this sign. It says, do not take anything up to a $20,000 fine and perhaps prison. And that might be the creature we heard last night when we were out looking for scorpions. We heard the crunching on the rocks, and when I turned the light on, there was nothing there. He's waiting for us on top. Let's go. This is going to be kind of a, a slow slog for me, because we're fairly high in elevation here, and I'm still out of breath. <laughs> but just to give you a little recap of what's going on, we're going to see some cliff dwellings that are way up here in the mountains, and we're going to follow this trail up. But you can see the environment is very different here. There's lots of deciduous trees. Uh, it's much cooler in here. They've got the stream in the bottom. I think it probably stays much wetter throughout the year. Well, I know it does because just down the hill where the sun shines all the time, it's uh, just nothing but cactus. And uh, this might be because the sun doesn't shine in here quite as much, I don't know. But you can just imagine that in ancient times, Indians probably sat on that very rock that I was just sitting on as they're coming up and down the mountain uh, to get to the fields down below. There's a stream down below. And we just broke open into this open area. And you can see there's a rocky, looks like a path going up that way, but the path is actually over here. And you can tell because of the way those stones are stacked and those carns right there. People are marking the trail for us. And it's quite obvious once you get up to it. It's a beautiful place. I'm actually kind of chilly. I have goosebumps. I'm gonna tell you this because it's cool out here. Not because I'm so scared or excited. Came a long way for this. Still following the trail up. I know it looks like it's pretty well worn, but you can trust me on this. We've already gone further than probably 99% of the people who come out here on vacation. <laughs> because they don't usually go very far from their car. It's just true. Watch our step on this loose stuff. I don't want to go pitching over the side because it'll probably be a, at least a few days before anybody come out and get me. My wife knows where I am, but there is no cell signal here. Haven't had any for a couple days. 
I have one more night before she'll call the rescue people. So we've been climbing for about a half an hour. It doesn't look like we're really much closer. I trust we are. You can get a view, not really. Here's a really good example of the use of those stones that people use to mark trails called Carns or Cairns. Uh, came to a fork in the trail right here and you can see there's a pile of stones there and typically that would mean that the trail uh, is turning or something's going on and you can see there's a trail that goes out that way got a lot of leaves on it though so it's not heavily used but going up the hill this way you can see that's a little more heavily used now people will normally put another set of stones a little bit further up the trail that you can see from this set of stones to indicate the proper way to go. And indeed they have. It took me a while to see them. <laughs> I'm a little slow in the morning. If you go from this pile of stones up the hill, you can see there's another pile of stones right there. So that would indicate to me that's the main trail. Either up those rocks or people have been cutting around the side. So we'll probably go around the side because it looks a little bit less like we'll break our legs if we fall, which is always a good thing. We're still following the trail around the side. We made the right decision back there. Kind of getting a glimpse of the mountains. They're getting a little bit closer, or the cliffs, I should say. We'll be there before nightfall, I hope. This nightfall will be coming soon. This is a strange little thing here. Look at the tree. Looks like something oozed out of it, like a cancerous tumor. Tuma. Wonder if it's a sign. Go back. So we're almost up to the uh, fork where the two canyons go off, one left, one right. And I saw these interesting plants here with bumblebees on them. He knows I'm here, he stopped. No, he didn't stop. He's hungrily eating. Eating, as they say in English. So we're well on our way. We're up in the left-hand side of the canyon. I'm certain you know, we're in the area where there's sheer rock walls. I'll show that to you in a second. Uh, but it's been a been a hike. I mean, I've been hiking hard for about an hour now, maybe a little longer. But we're getting there, and that's what's important. I have to rest every once in a while, like right now. <sighs> All right, that's enough. Let's go ahead and look around here just for a second. Down in the valley, there's where I camped last night, and where the truck is parked. And we've hiked up the side of the hill into the sheer rock walls. Of this canyon now i don't see any type of dwellings yet or granaries or granaries i guess i should tell oh, isn't that beautiful i just love that what a gorgeous place yeah the canyon's going to really narrow down as we go up through there and if you look close in those rock walls up there you'll see uh structures and they'll be like pile of rocks that look a lot like a wall and those are either uh, like little homes where people would live or what they call granaries or granaries <laughs> Not sure how you want to pronounce it and What that was was little uh, alcoves back in the rock like little baby caves That they would wall off and put the grains in there because again These guys here that were here you know, six eight hundred years ago Well thousand years ago down in the bottom they farm they farm corn and squash and beans and uh, of course the corn when they dried it would keep for a long time so they would bring it up in the hills near where they lived and they put it back in these little caves and seal off the entrance so rodents wouldn't get in there because of course you know the mice and the rats you know pack rats and stuff could get in there and eat all their food that they would need to get through the winter so i'm sure we'll see some of those little things up here and i'll point them out as we go along can you imagine the people having to hike off this mountain every day to get to the bottom to tend their fields? Not knowing if something was going to destroy them during the night, either a competing band or uh, animals. Well, maybe they had kids stay down there overnight, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, next time we hit the water, we're going to get washed off. I'm getting hot. And just right around the corner from uh, where I was showing you the canyon, where it breaks into here, we have wild grapes. So they would have been eating these too. Uh, these are the little, where the grapes will be later in the fall. That's wild grape, it's all along through here. So I'm sure they would have tended or at least harvested the grapes. I don't know if they made wine or not. I've never heard of that, probably not, but ooh, it's possible. And these look like, uh, that looks like elderberry. Is that elderberry? If it is, I'm not positive on that. Uh, they're edible as well. 
if it's elderberry. Uh, you gotta cook them, I think, though. You can make, like, jam and jellies out of them. They're kind of tart. <laughs> but they are edible. So we're just off the main trail here. You can kind of see it running up the side of the hill, and I saw a little side, little side trail, and I could hear water running up here. And what it is, is a spring that pops out of the side of this big cliff. This big rock wall. Oh, that's nice. What a beautiful spring. And you know that there have been people drinking this water for thousands of years. I mean thousands. You know, the Indians. Now you see the water coming out here now, but if you look, if you follow up the cliff, you see that white stuff? That's like the uh, travertine that's deposited. Well, it is here too. Look, this whole thing right here. That's deposited by the minerals precipitating out of the spring water. So the spring used to be right above that gravel layer right there. You see that? You see where it's white? That's where the water used to run down and tumble down across here. So a thousand years ago, maybe the Indians were drinking up there. I don't know. You can see it over here too. Look, this whole wall is covered with the travertine. So that's where the water was coming out. I actually have an explanation for that if you're interested. The, and if you're not, just skip forward like a minute. The water would percolate down through the mountain, uh, through the solid rock and the cracks in the rock, and it would hit an impermeable layer. In this case, the impermeable, impermeable layer is that layer of river stones that I'm showing you. Because it hit that and it started tumbling out over the top. And eventually it found its way through that uh, river rock layer. Now it's coming out down below. There's probably another layer of river rock that we can't see underground. Hey, look at those flowers. Aren't they pretty? But the sheer canyon walls here, still don't see any uh, structures up there, but there could be some. And we're going to go up through there. We've got a long ways to go yet. It's beautiful though, huh? Let's take a look at this water. Oh boy, it looks inviting. We might be in it before the day's over. Isn't that interesting the way it pours out like that? I guess that's natural. Probably a giant rock wedged in there. That's cool. Uh, I guess the uh, smaller rocks tumble down through here during floods, collect in the bottom, and get washed out right here. That's why it's grooved out, I would imagine. I can't think of any other reason for that to be here. I uh, can't imagine this man-made, probably just from the friction. Looks lots of flowers up here. Look at that. Who would have thought that in the middle of the Sonoran Desert you would have an oasis like this? It's so much cooler here too. It'll be in the 90s today. Not here, I hope. Uh, I'm gonna put a rope up over there to get around it. Watch out for snakes. Snakes. Look at that. I think we should go up in there. What do you think? So we made it up inside the cavity where the waterfall is. I didn't get too wet. But if you ever come here, those rocks with the green on them are very slick, so be careful. And that rock right there hanging down is very hard. Watch your head. So we'll just hang out here for a couple minutes and uh, cool our overheated body. But don't forget, I'm hot. Let me show you these rocks real quick so I can go ahead and put them back down there where I found them. Now keep in mind, I'm not an archaeologist. What I tell you is probably true. I have like a 99% probability that I'm right. And I think I'm probably right sometimes when archaeologists are wrong. Uh, but I'm going to show you these rocks and, and show you one way to tell that if a stone has been worked by uh, humans um, and not just a natural stone that you might find along the trail. I think I have one here that's probably like a scraping implement. It's just a normal rock that you'll find along the trail. You can see it's got edges on it, but there's no indication that anyone's pecked at this and, and, and made a, a cutting blade on it. But look at this other rock that I found in the trail. I think this is a scraper of some sort. Because, look at this face right here. See this face? This has all been chipped. I'll try to do a close up. If you look right along here, 
You can see this has all been chipped and worked back. You see this light here, and then it's got the, the darker red all the way around, and little pieces going all the way around. It's not like that here, and it's not like that here. You've got a couple big chunks taken out. It's only on this one smooth face. So let's flip it over and look at this side. It's kind of the same thing. You can see that there's been a few divots taken out here, here, and here. And not so much over here. You know, it looks a little divity, but it's actually kind of smooth. So, what is this thing? I think this is, like I said, a scraper. That would be have been held in the hand. Probably like this. Just like that, see? That's one another way you can kind of tell tools sometimes is that they're comfortable to hold because you know they had to work for these things they would held it like this and probably use it to scrape like hide or anything that needed to be scraped down or maybe bark off trees but just pretend this is a hide you would hold it like this you would pull back and scrape it just like that and that would uh, smooth things down it might take the fat off of a hide and it might take the bark off of a sapling or a tree again i'm not an archaeologist so be at least slightly skeptical of uh, what I say, uh, I'll, I'll never tell you something that I don't think is true. Anytime you're on public property, you're not allowed to keep anything that you find that's man-made. I probably shouldn't have even picked it up and moved it that far, but since it's in this gully here that gets flooded all the time, it'll probably end up down at the bottom of the hill in a thousand years anyway. I'm going to just go ahead and throw it in the bushes right over there. So up the hill we go, hiddly hidey ho Wish me luck. <laughs> I'm going to need it. Well, we made it up the rope. I actually had to use a grapevine for part of the climb. That was a little sketchy. But it's certainly worth the view. Look at that. Can you imagine living up here? Wow. That's the side we came up over there. Oh, what a beautiful spot that is opens up again i guess that's our rope right there it's pretty shaky but we'll have to trust it and then another four off and you can see it has the same type of thing but look how it goes off that direction makes you wonder why guess what happens when the water is really pouring over it hits this wall bounces this direction goes down to the bottom and goes up that way it's just following the trajectory of the water or the inertia of the water so what do you think it's a life worthy <laughs> feels pretty strong we won't put too much of a weight on it well we survived the rope i can hear some creatures whistling up there it's a, some type of desert marmot. Look at that pool. Wow. That thing's got to be 10 feet deep. At least. Wish I brought my mask and snorkel. What a gorgeous spot. Oh, I can see a buzzard up there circling around way up there by that cliff face. Just a tiny dot. I wasn't afraid of cracking my skull. I could slide down that. I could slip and slide. But I'd crack my skull. Jeez, there's two toads mating at my feet. I'm glad I didn't step on them because I was not paying attention. There they go. Well, I don't know if those are toads or not. They have a green bottom. Oh, male's hanging on, isn't he? I'm just really, really glad I didn't step on him because that would ruin my day. Should we keep going? So I'm taking another little rest. The trail came up out of the canyon bottom and it's going up the side of the hill and it's pretty steep. If you look at that big rock that's standing up down there, that's about where the waterfall was, or that choke point. So we're slowly working our way up. And I'll start to get the binoculars out and scoping the hillsides as we go. And then we'll probably start seeing some structures. These are the binoculars that I use. They're Pentex 10x50s. They're really old though. 
So they're kind of heavy and clunky, but they have very good optics and a wide field of view. I highly recommend if you come out here uh, to bring some decent binoculars because you can see so much more with them when you're scoping these hills than you can with the naked eye. Uh, it's amazing how much you miss with your naked eye because the rocks all look alike and some of them are a long ways away. Another nice little place to take a quick rest. I rest a lot, <laughs> but I move pretty fast too. That's the stream down there we were following for a while. And I was looking over the valley, and the very bottom of that is where we were parked in uh, camp last night. And what we're gonna do is just work our way around and keep following this trail. It's a nice trail. And uh, it was nice of people to leave the ropes for us to use because that would have been really tough without those ropes. Hear the whistle. This is an interesting formation here. Looks like limestone that uh, looks like a, a riverbed or a seabed. The nature of the hike has changed again. We're away from the water and going through a lot of boulders. Definitely not for the faint of heart or lung. <laughs> the trail goes straight up that way. I have no idea how much further we have to go, but I suspect it's a long ways. <laughs> Well, I love this here. It's lo I just love this spot. I hope you enjoy it too. This video is probably getting super long, but we're going to make it a long video because I want you guys to see what's out here. Here's where we had our last break and hiking up. It's kind of steep and there's another rope, although I don't think we're going to need it right here. Um, we'll just grab a hold of these roots and hope we don't tickle any scorpions rattlesnakes as we do it well I use the rope <laughs> it's really steep and those loose rocks down there are treacherous so the rope has come in handy we'll need it just a little bit more maybe I don't want to slide down on my butt all the way to the bottom of the canyon down there keep in mind now we came from the very bottom down there far as you can see I just hope we don't meet mama bear coming down that trail we don't have too many places we can run to that she can't get us get off the beaten path guys still on the mama bear trail and I guess they ran out of rope <laughs> That's some type of strapping goes up around the bend. I guess they tied a rock on it so that this end stays down here. It doesn't spring back up. So I'm going to have to grab that with both hands and try to make my way up there. It's just very slippery. That's the problem. And if you did slip, you'd slide way down the hill, maybe pitch over the side. Well, we're still on the mama bear section of the trail. I've had to stop like three times long climbing up out of the canyon looks like we might be getting to the top right there top of the trail anyway we have plenty of time so <sighs> no rush no rush no hush I'm tired no rush still hiking up that little mama bear trail I think this is my fourth stop but this is also my first glimpse our first glimpse of the cliff dwelling are you ready right up the trail see it Look at that. We're gonna go up and look at it up close. Remember, that thing's like 600, 700 years old. Dry stack stones. It's protected because it's under an overhang in the cliff. And that's why they built there. So they'd be protected. Cannot be attacked from the top, only from the bottom, up the Mama Bear Trail. And also they're in the sun, the morning sun and the winter sun. Earlier I was saying that they like to build where the morning sun hits, but that's also the winter sun. So they could stay nice and toasty up in their stone home. Let's go look at it. I'll have to put you away though until I get up a little further. Well, we are almost there. There she is. It's like a castle. Wow. Soon. Watch 
watch out for rattlesnakes. Hate to get bitten way up here because I don't think we'd uh, make it down alive. I'm gonna rest here in the shade of the trees, but not across the river for a few moments. Right here. Catch my breath, get a drink of water, and we'll head up together. We made it. So I have rested in the shade of the trees and I'm getting ready to head on up. But if you're watching me talk right now, that means I'm gonna break this video into two segments because I took a lot of video coming up and um, I don't want to make this whole thing like three hours long. So if I'm able to use a lot of that video of the different plants and waterfalls and whatnot, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it here and finish out the video walking through uh, the structure and whatnot and telling you a little bit about that. Now, I do promise you the second part will be tomorrow night. So you're not gonna have to wait to see uh, the inside of the Pueblo. You hear me talking and seeing me talking, that means we'll see you tomorrow night. It'll be great, I promise. It's going to be awesome. We'll see you then.